And thanks everyone for joining. Today, we're gonna to talk about how SonarCube integrates into your development workflow and how that's valuable for your team. Now, for those not familiar with Sonar Source or SonarCube, let me briefly touch on our mission. And that is that every developer and development team uses Sonar Source products for their code quality and security. Since the beginning, our products have been made by developers for developers. We want every developer to be able to use them and we want them to be a part of that development process. We want things to be simple and transparent and we want accuracy in what we provide and to always be helpful. And so the end goal is that every developer writes clean, safe, quality code every day. Okay, if we talk about coding practices today, developers love to write better code. And today they wanna to get feedback during code review. And there are some standard tooling and processes that developers nowadays use for that code review. They're creating branches for new features and for bug fixes. They ask for feedback from their teammates to find problems and to improve their code. And they're doing that in their ALM tools, GitHub, Azure DevOps, Bitbucket, and GitLab. Now, where's the right place to deliver value? Well, we believe that is the ALM and it's the standard expectation here. This is where developers are tracking code and where they're submitting changes for review. So there's no doubt developers spend a lot of time in their ALM and they're using pull requests. Pull requests are where developers are already discussing about code quality and the validity of a code change. And so it's only natural for SonarCube to provide feedback there. And for some time now, that's exactly where we focused our development efforts. We started back in SonarCube version seven with branch analysis. And from there, we improved our integration to include PR decoration for all four of the ALMs that you saw earlier. We're on version 8.3 now, and this really latest release is where you can find the complete set of functionality that we're discussing here today. So it's important to add value in the right place, and that's the pull request. Now, the right data is just as important, and that's where we leverage the value of the SonarCube static analysis and its ability to detect issues and vulnerability in your code. And does it make sense to stop there? Let's make the analysis integral to the workflow. Now, we didn't develop this in a vacuum. We knew, we knew value could only come from strong relationships, and we leveraged strong partnerships to build tight integrations. As I mentioned previously, Sonar Source is a product first company. And so that means we also focused on product first partnerships. Now let's stop here. I'd love to find out what tools, uh, ALM tools folks are using. So we're gonna actually launch a second poll. Let me get that to you folks, okay. So if you could let us know uh, the tools that you're using, I guess it would be the predominant tool if you're using more than one. Lots of votes coming in, so we'll give this a few more seconds. Then we can all take a look. All right. Just a couple more seconds. If, you, uh, if you'd like to vote, please do so now. Okay, I think things have trickled off, so here we go. We actually have a pretty even distribution. Looks like GitHub is, is a bit ahead of the other folks in uh, popularity at 38%, but uh, great representation really for all four. So thanks for voting, appreciate that. All right, so let's get back to things here. So we talked about the product first partnerships. Um, what we wanted to do is build what makes sense for the user. And of course, unlock the great UX that our partners had already built into their tools. And in doing that, we could combine the best of both worlds. So a little bit about our partners. They even come and ask us to participate in feature launches like GitHub Actions. And they talk about us in their communities. These companies know us well and they're talking about us during their keynotes. We collaborate with them on code quality and security best practices, and we even get recognized as a top publisher. And of course, 
we're happy to receive good vibes from our newest integration with GitLab. So let's see firsthand how SonarCube integrates with the ALMs and what it can do for your PRs. I'd like to mention that this feature is available starting with developer edition, and it's easy to request a free trial online at sonarcube.org. Now, before we see that live demo, let's take a quick look at a typical workflow. Elsa mentioned earlier SonarLint when we started, and it's a free and open source IDE extension that finds issues on the fly while you're coding. Okay, so let's say we're done with writing our code, so we're ready to open up our PR, so we do that. That kicks off our CI systems to check out and build code, and that in turn is gonna kick off an automatic sonar cube analysis. And when that analysis is com complete, any bugs and vulnerabilities detected are decorated right back into your PR. Okay, let's take a closer look. Here we have an open pull request in GitHub. And you can see that we natively support GitHub checks. And depending upon the policies configured, we can even prevent a merge when you have a failing quality gate. And that's exactly what we have here. The particular quality gate profile that we have set up requires 100% review of security hotspots. And we have a single security hotspot that's unreviewed. Okay, so we've got some work to do to investigate this. So let's drill down and get more details on this. And that's easy to do by clicking right here, which will open up SonarCube. Notice that you see the same code quality uh, metrics in SonarCube as what you saw in the GitHub decoration. And so here's that security hotspot that we need to take a look at. So I click on that. It takes us into a dedicated security hotspot view. A security hotspot is a snippet of code that may or may not be a vulnerability. It needs a little bit of investigation to determine whether or not it is a vulnerability. So in this case, we have a potential vulnerability in a cross-site request forgery. Okay, so as a developer, I would review my code with the peer and I would triage the hotspot accordingly. Now for this demo, we're gonna go ahead and mark that as safe. We'll change that status and boom, there you go. No more security hotspots to review. And in fact, if we go back and take a look at that PR that we opened, we can now see that we've dynamically updated and we have a passing quality gate. That's great, that's fantastic, because now we can merge this code with confidence. Okay, now before I leave the confines of GitHub and SonarCube, I'd like to show you a couple more things. This is the project page on Next, and Next is our dog food instance of SonarCube that's running the latest build. So let's find a project, uh, an interesting project. How about the Python analyzer? For those familiar with SonarCube, you'll recognize this as the issues on new code on the master branch. This new code period started three days ago, and it's tracking the code quality on new or changed code coming in from those PRs since the period started. And this is a key concept to tracking a clean master and what we at SonarSource call clean as you code. Now, starting with developer edition, we have this dropdown that gives you access to all the pull requests and branches that are currently relevant for this project. So in the spirit of right information, right time, and right place, this gives you easy access to the analysis against all the PRs and branches that are occurring in this project. Now, if we open one of these PRs, you'll notice we give you a clean, narrowed down focused view on what really matters. And one last thing to show you. If we click up here where it says, see the PR, we can open up that PR back in GitHub. And so here you can see, if we scroll down, that we're on the conversations tab. And we've decorated from Sonar Source Next, kudos passing quality gate. We added this feature of commenting in the conversation tab on GitHub in version SonarCube 8.3. And if we go back and navigate over to checks, you'll see that we've come full circle. We're back to the view that we started with, 
and how easy it is to navigate issues and see all the relative, <laughs> relative information based on the links that are available to you. So let's continue with the presentation. Now, I'm not going to show you this uh, functionality in all four ALMs, as the functionality is similar across all four. However, I can show you some quick screenshots. So here we see uh, what we just viewed in GitHub. Here we see a decoration in Azure DevOps. We can see on the right-hand side here, we have a failed quality gate. If we move on, we can see the same thing in Bitbucket. Here the quality gate is on the left, also a failure. We also have the code quality metrics included. And then finally, in GitLab, failed quality gate, and that's due to five unreviewed security hotspots. So you can see we're bringing a consistent, valuable feature set for all of the ALMs with every pull request. We're giving you a clear quality gate in the pull request, as well as detection of bugs, code smells, and vulnerabilities. You saw that we were able to drill down on an issue in SonarCube. And in fact, then when we changed the status of an issue, that gave us a live update back into our pull request in GitHub. You also saw the ability to block a merge based on your quality gate profile. In this case, we blocked because we had an unreviewed security hotspot. And of course, you saw the multiple ALM support. Okay, we have, a, we have four additions to fit every use case, starting with Community Edition. Community Edition is free and open source. It's used by thousands of companies and organizations, and it supports 15 languages. Branch analysis and the PR decoration feature that we've been looking at here today starts with Developer Edition. We also have Enterprise and Data Center Editions for more advanced use cases. So let's summarize what we covered. Built for developers and development teams. It's all about giving you the right information at the right place and in the right time, at the right time. We definitely are all about keeping noise down and minimizing the context switching. It's giving you a clear quality gate status so you know whether or not you can merge that code with confidence. And then finally, this is all possible because of a tight integration with our partners. Now, we're not done adding value. Future Sonar Q versions will add even more good vibes and keep you writing clean code. Now, there's more to discover on the homepage at sonarcube.org. And we also have an active community forum where you can get product updates, request help, and even offer feature suggestions. Okay, looks like we have some time uh, for a couple questions. So I'm gonna turn things back over to Elsa while I look over the questions coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Clint. Check out our uh, community uh, there. We'll also put the uh, recording and the questions there. Um, and also it's just a great place to ask some of these questions uh, and communicate with other developers and Sonar Source um, employees. Um, and finally, for more information on what Clint just covered, check out sonarcube.org sonarcube.org uh, for dedicated information on all of the integrations for each ALM, um, as well as our downloads page that features all the additions that Clint just covered. Um, you can easily request a free trial of developer enterprise edition to get started today. Okay, Clint, uh, we do definitely have a few more minutes. Any questions you wanna cover live here on the call? Yeah, I'm just taking a look here at things coming in. Um... So the question about using uh, analysis for a C application and standards like uh, MISRA. And so, yes, we do. We do have a, a C, C++ analyzer that actually starts, that comes with developer edition. Um, we have a website called rules.sonarsource.com. And there you can see all of the languages supported. For SonarCube, it's 27 languages. And so there's uh, 15 languages that come with community. There's a few more that come with developer and then uh, enterprise adds just a few more beyond that. But you can get all the information at rules.sonarsource.com. And yes, we definitely can analyze C and C++. And we do support MISR standards. Okay, 
let's see here. Um, question about integrating a single instance of SonarCube to multiple ALMs. Uh, yes, we can support multiple ALMs. Um, question about is GitLab supported on both on-prem and cloud? And so for GitLab, and in fact it is, you can connect SonarCube um, to your GitLab on-premises or your GitLab cloud version. Uh, there's a question about cost involved with this feature. And so yes, community edition is free, it's open source. Developer, enterprise, and the data center editions are commercial uh, products. They do have a licensing charge. You can get all that information online and see our pricing um, and get further further information there. And again, I want to I want to stress that you can get a free trial online at sonarcube.org. It's easy to uh, request that. I believe the trial is two weeks, so plenty of time to take a look at things and um, check it out. Okay, I think there's a question about should um, should every PR be analyzed? Yes, um, that's the recommendation. So if you if you recall my mentioning of what we call clean as you code, uh, essentially that means that you establish a new code period, meaning that um, we're going to track new or changed code over a period of time. And typically that new code period is maybe since the last version, or maybe that's your your next sprint. And if we don't introduce any code issues over this new code period, then we're keeping and if not only keeping things clean, but really we're gonna be improving things in the master. And if we always do that, then we're always improving things. And so that starts with, you know, in your IDE, finding things with SonarLint in your IDE. And then when you open that pull request, we're gonna to wanna to analyze that because then that is going to find, you're gonna merge that back into master. And so the only way to keep your master um, super clean and tidy is, is checking out those PRs. Okay, let's see if we have another question or two here. Question about Bitbucket Cloud support. Oh, I should definitely know this. Um, I gotta tell you, I can't recall right offhand, but I don't think it is. So uh, Bitbucket Cloud, no for now. Um, it is on our roadmap. I don't have a time frame for when we would support Bitbucket Cloud, but um, we are, it is on a roadmap. Okay, I think that that wraps it up for the questions. Um, as Elsa mentioned, we'll, we'll take a look um, if there's any that we missed, and if there's any, um, we'll provide those answers to you folks. And so I think that's, uh, that's, that's it for us. Thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Look for more webinars in the future from SonarSource. Um, and um, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.